live from the Impacted Harbor. Okay, so um, taking a look at at the spies from yesterday, um, this was pretty close to what we described in the morning meeting. Uh, flush through the prior day's low, um, then you got your bounce. Uh, a little bit more muted than yesterday. Look at the bounce on Friday. Um, almost two dollars here. Or maybe this was two dollars. And then yesterday's was dollar, but a dollar and a quarter. So um, we're seeing a compression again on the volatility, um, but still, still very common patterns in terms of uh, the bottoming process the last couple of days. Um, at the end of the day, we tried to do a flush. We, or I should say, midday afternoon, tried to do a flush, um, made a higher low, and closed right at 243, which. Um, seems to be a real important price now, this 243 um, over the last three trading days. So small a bid this morning, um, working our way up towards Friday's high, which was 243.80 to 244 and change. Um, and so what we want to see now is if we start to grind, now that we had a test of the low, buyer stepped in pretty clearly, um, a little bit higher. What you'd look for basically is a close above 244. I close above 244, then we could maybe see the grinding back um, closer to the closer to the highs. Uh, a failure up here this morning, um, where we where we come off and we get below 243 um, and start to hold below 243, that wouldn't wouldn't bode particularly well for the market. Here's the con the bigger picture context, the daily chart. So we have this kind of uptrend from the election lows, and you know it was we st the trend started. We would move sideways for a couple months, and then we'd move up and sideways for a couple months and move up. And then here on this sideways action, uh, the volatility got very compressed. Big down move, grind back up into the consolidation range. Big down move. So we're basically back down in this consolidation range of the June first to kind of. Um, mid July area here, and I said to close above 244, but right above 244 is the top of that consolidation range, which is around 244.70, 244.80. So um, I think from a bigger picture perspective, this would be more important. And maybe we'll be lucky enough, maybe we'll get a couple of weeks inside of here. And we'll get a, a break to the upside or a break to the downside, which brings us to 240, uh, unless things got a little out of hand. So it would be nice though to settle back down into a in a, in a tight range before uh, before we broke. It would be a, a clean trade. Uh, on the IWM side, So I talked about this yesterday. We had this multi, it was like a four month consolidation period. Um, we came back down quickly once we got below that 139, back towards the bottom of this range. Um, even on the, remember, even though the spies took out the lows yesterday and then had their the reversal pattern there, um, this 134, they're treating it as an area where they really want to buy. So it wasn't even pressured and we didn't take it out. Here's the, Five minutes. So we can see that from yesterday. So 144.12 to 144.20 was support on the Friday. Um, you can see the wick here. Um, people are waiting to buy it, and when you have a wick like that, it got below 20 cents and very quickly was back um, 28 and then back about 40. So, I mean, clearly a buy anywhere between 134 and 134.20. Uh, you get your hands on some IWM. Now it's a dollar thirty off of that support this morning. Next interesting area is this one thirty one thirty six here. We're at the second down leg on Thursday. All right, so we got a few things in play. Uh, let's start with Momo. So Momo. 
when I started looking at it, it was down a lot and it's still down a lot. So at first glance, so I'm not, I'm not logged into my platform, so I don't have all the news sources. So, um, but based on the Benzinga, the numbers they're reporting there on the, the scanner, um, things look pretty good in terms of the numbers. So whenever I see numbers that look good, Um, excuse me, looking at the wrong thing on the scanner. <laughs> I was looking at Wuba. Momo. The Momo, you know, like 35 cents instead of 31, so they beat by over 10%. Revenues are really strong. And so when I see something down like this and the numbers are good, I usually go to the daily just to see how much it had run up recently. And maybe their, maybe their, their guidance wasn't good, but I don't see the guidance. And so we see... Momo had was a seventeen dollar stock before um, before this uptrend started, so um, almost a triple there. And so that sometimes that will explain when the, the good numbers get sold. So if we go from the low here, seventeen fifty, and the high was forty six, almost a thirty dollar move. Um, that's you know well over 150 percent. And after it puts in the high here, it starts to consolidate. Maybe we get another few months, six months of consolidation before it can continue higher. But again, the numbers, just looking at them, are, are quite solid. And it's it's coming all the way down into this 40 support area. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So I blew through this this first support, 4350. Second support area was 4250. Blew through that, and now it's coming into this right here. So some sort of bottoming in here. A bounce back up to here would be pretty normal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow, that's just slow and steady. I mean, if you were shorting this in the pre-market early, just slow and steady. But now it's coming into the 40 support here. So I would use 40, and it already looks like it touched 40. Let's go to the two-minute. This wick here is screwing up the chart. That's why I can't get it to really zoom in. Um, so I touched 40, and now it's going you know, it, to the bid stepped up to above the quarter. Now what you're watching is really to see can it can it move back up to the 70 cents here where the last down leg in the pre-market started. But I mean, I, I'm not a person who wants to be short this down here at this area. I mean, certainly, you know, below 43.50, the first support. If you wanted to short it below that, why not? Below 42.50, you can see even people shorted it, and then it popped back for resuming the downtrend. But the risk reward is is on the long side here now. You want to be long. Um, in terms of the balance, uh, you know, back up into this area right here is interesting. Um, that can roll over again and test 40 later after it bounces because again, 17 to mid 40s is a big move. Um, but for no other reason than that, uh, based on the numbers that I'm seeing. So DSW. So DSW, um, retail space, right? They beat by um, 30 cents, 30 percent, uh, only on a small beat on revenue, which means they're really got their expenses in line and their pricing is good and to be able to make that kind of money. So um, had a huge multi-year uptrend, topped out in 2013, and has been in a downtrend since. These, these down moves are getting shallower and shallower. So this this report could be the big the, the end of this downtrend maybe. 
it uh, breaks this down, trying to work its way back up to let's see, 24, 25 and a half. Wow. So I mean, I mean, mainly up. Uh, I mean, well, actually, the the EPS numbers they blew away, but you know, also the stock is beaten down. So, but right through this eighteen. I put eighteen fifty to eighteen seventy five. This. A little dangerous to be chasing up here, but it was, I mean, a couple weeks ago, it was up at 1930. More comfortable seeing what it does here in the 18 area. Um, was bought here a few times. And maybe it closes at the high, goes to $20 tomorrow, something like that. It's real strong. Um, this one normally, which is the trade. That'd be why that showed up in the scanner. <sighs> anyway, whenever I'm on vacation, it's uh, computer's always slower. So, um, as I said, a little bit risky chasing it up here. Uh, let's see what it does. Use 18 as uh, inflection right on the open. Uh, next one is Toll Brothers. Here's the Daily and Toll Brothers. It's another one reported really good numbers. Here I I, I highlighted on the uh, on the daily chart the last two reports for you. So it was a $32 stock. Numbers were good. It gapped to 34. Continued its uptrend. Gapped up again on good numbers to just below 40, and they sold it that day, but came right back into its uptrend. Um, and now this morning, um, they. They beat EPS again, um, but the revenues were very, very slightly below expectations. So just um, it had gone up about 20% from two quarters ago to the highs here. And, you know, with good numbers, it's hard to think that it's going to really go below this area right here. 37, 3680 to 37, what I put on there. 3670, 3680. Let's take a look at it. I mean, these are it's just not really printing enough volume for us to know anything. I did put on the sheet use 38 as an inflection. That makes sense because uh, that's where they were buying it into support yesterday in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, if it pops up there and fails, you know, these it seems like these home builders quite often uh, will get hammered in the morning. Um, so that 36.70, 36.80 area, if it fails up here at 38 is how I play it. And if it actually... Um, yeah, it's positively, meaning it, it blows through 38, gets up in these 38s and consolidates above 38, and then starts to kind of break this little mini downtrend from the last couple of days. Uh, then I think more on the long side, other than down at the 3680 support. That's toll. Oh, Wuba, unbelievable move yesterday. I was just looking at this this morning. So we got above 60. Um, so it didn't put in a high uh, in the pre-market or right on the open. Right on the open, it popped up. It failed to get to this 59, the pre-market resistance. Um, but then after being bought at 57 on the open and then being bought a little bit higher at 57 and a half here, it slowly grinded up. And when it took out that pre-market high, it went up cleanly for almost $2 to 61 and consolidated again um, for one, two, three, for about a half an hour here, above and below 61. And then at a second leg to 64 and a half, and then you had your consolidation for wide consolidation for the next couple of hours between 65 and 63. So, I mean, that's just a monster move. Um, I put some more, the next resistance levels from the daily chart on there. So you have 65 to trade against to see what it does this morning, yesterday's high where it failed um, twice. 
you have 63 um, when it put an initial uptrend high, pulled back into 63. People were waiting to buy it there when it pulled in again. Then they stepped up a little bit higher here to 63 and a half. So 63 to 63 and a half, um, depending on how it behaves there, let's say it overshot today and it was a little bit too much, a lot of short covering. Um, what you would see is a failure up here and it would slice through easily. You know, there wouldn't be buyers waiting here again. And then it would come back up and fail and then you get a deeper pullback. Obviously, if it's consolidating above 64 to 65 and breaks to the upside, I put the next longer term resistance in there, 68 to 70. It's a long ways to go. Um, HLF. Now, HLF actually was spent up most of the day above the top of the Dutch auction range they announced. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, It traded above 69 early, and then they just bought it at 60 and a half for the next couple of hours. So here, here, here. And when it tried to curl up and make a new high to go to 70, it, it failed. Um, this is actually pretty good short here. It didn't come off much, but failure to make the new high then takes out the support area. Came off. Let's see how much did I come off. 70. It came off 60, 70 cents, so it's not bad. Um, and then it was just was accumulated in a very tight range here between 60 and 68 and a quarter. So consolidation, lower consolidation. Um, same thing here again today. If it gets below 67.90, um, you look for it to move back down into this right here. And have alerts at 69 and 70. I still think uh, I still think there's a, a pretty good chance that it fails up uh, somewhere here above 68, 69. Yesterday was the failure, and it it pulls in more to the mid 60s. Maybe it takes a few days. Uh, under 67, uh, yeah, that was a huge whiff. It dropped it for a few seconds, then reversed right back up. Uh, so looking at it, was it a bad idea? No, it was, a, it was an okay idea. I mean, you have to deal with this here. Like if you, this was your short here, you have to kind of deal with uh, 6670. I would say if it gets below 67 again, I'd be really careful about shorting it until it's like below 6670. Um, and then ADP. Yeah, ADP. This is a closing low since uh, since the up move started July 26. The entire up move is really erased. So here is, um, it was being accumulated for a few days in the 102 and a half, 103 area. And then it had the monster $15 move. Um, it's right back down here again. Maybe we'll get a re repeat of the sideways action for four days. So it's below 103 right now. Um, ideally, it would move sideways again below 104, between 102 and 104 for today, tomorrow, and then maybe curl out of this to the upside. Um, I would think people who wanted to get out of this would be out of this by now. I mean, look at the volume on the up move here versus look at all these spikes. I would think people are out of it who want to be out of it. Um, so that's it. Um, so again, guys, it's getting to late August, but there's still some some very good stuff here. I mean, Momo, DSW, um, have pretty good potential. So especially Momo. Um, as always, be patient and good luck. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, 
as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.